What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got a 32 inch upright. It's running hyperspin. So first off, excuse the bags under my eyes. I might look tired, but I am not tired. Uh, we just brought our baby girl into the world last week. Ava Luna is officially into the world. Again, shout out to my wife, a powerful woman. A man can never do what you did. So uh, basically, just excuse my tired look, but I'm wide awake. Um, basically, before delivery, um, I had a customer message me. I believe actually found me from YouTube. Uh, messaged me on my actual website. Uh, basically, was looking for a 32 inch upright, but this one's a little unique. So this is going out to JP out in Springfield Gardens. Again, in New York, messaged me um, on YouTube, went to form submissions on my website. Uh, going back and forth, we were looking at 32 inch uprights. I started out with the Pandora's box build, but he actually had a whole different idea in his mind and it's it's pretty cool. I've never done it, but I'm pretty excited because this is my first time ever and I'm really excited to see what he does with it. So basically, let me give you the rundown on this cabinet. He purchased everything, the cabinet, the monitor, everything, the speakers, the sound. I didn't put anything out of pocket. Basically, I just built it for him. Uh, put the T-molding in, all that. Now, some people might be like, well, this guy paid you to build it. Yeah, I'll give you that option. If you want to basically supply all the hardware, I'll build it for you. Again, some people either don't have the time or the patience or they would just rather have somebody else build a cabinet and that's perfectly fine. You could message me, I'll do anything you want. I don't care. So again, pretty unique. He bought everything. Basically delivered it to my job site and then I took it home and then I built it. I sent them pictures on the way. Um, what's pretty cool is that we did this before my wife was giving birth so he kind of knew that uh my time was a little bit taken up but um i gave him a, a an estimate as far as easter sunday which is next sunday i'm gonna deliver this bad boy tomorrow he actually gave it to me last week um right before my wife went to hospital and i completed it it's not that bad so anyway back to the bill discussion so again he supplied everything i i basically put everything together i put the buttons in but He's gonna be doing all the wiring, all the software, all the PC side to it. So, pretty unique, eight button layout. Let's flip the camera around. You guys don't like self mode. Let's check out this super unique build. So real quick, let's look at the basics of the cabinet build. So this is the 32 inch upright, Marvel versus DC, anti-heroes build. Again, JP purchasing everything. So he placed the order with Game Room Solutions. Um, shout out to JP making sure they spelled the word heroes correctly. So now normally I like to make the order with Game Room Solutions. Some people have complaints about them. Um, they always do right by me. So God forbid there was a, uh, like a hiccup on the cabinet, I would be able to message Ryan and then he most definitely always fixes it. Um, so think of it as this, customer ordered the cabinet, had it delivered to his house. He then put it in his SUV, drove it to my job site. I then put it in my truck and then bought it home. So it was moving in all honesty, we were a little afraid because he pulled up to the job site. The boxes that these were in were beat up a little bit, a couple of holes too. So usually I like to at least order, you know, on my end, Game Room Solutions, this way it gets delivered directly to the house. Um, but knock on wood, everything was perfect. No issues whatsoever. There was a tiny, tiny little like, um, chip on the bottom but once i put the t-molding in you no longer saw that um again going back 32 inch upright what's really great about this jp requesting the eight button it is gorgeous eight buttons with the trackball three inch led trackball on this and he's got the coin door now a couple of major key points about this build and again jp supplying everything um he doesn't he didn't get the normal sound system that i usually get which are logitechs he kind of got something off of amazon so had to modify a couple of things nothing too crazy but i'm gonna go through every single thing because again customers supplied the hardware so you know yes you could find cheaper hardware logitechs they could be expensive he i'm not gonna say it but he has like a no-name brand audio setup um but it's fairly decent it's, it's pretty good i can't lie it is pretty loud too so again it's basically somebody giving me a whole new way of building if you think about it i'm so used to dismantling the logitechs and all that so big thing again different sound system on this i'll take a look at what the wattage is i think it was like 
120. Um, and the big, big, big deal that he did make this screen is an Ultra Gear LG monitor. Yes, it's an LG monitor. Big thing though, I do notice that it's a 31.5 inch Ultra Gear. The biggest thing, again, he wants to do a PC build. His heart is set on PC. He said, Vic, I was on Reddit. These Reddit guys are suggesting this screen because of the motion blur. And that doesn't make sense because this is a 165 hertz monitor. This is a legit gaming monitor. Big deal, he's gonna be playing Street Fighter V on this. I'm gonna be loading up Street Fighter V on this. This way you can kind of see it. I mean, he'll see it before the video goes out, but I will be loading up some Street Fighter V on this. Real quick again, 31.5 inch screen. Big thing if you do notice, there is a slight gap. Again, usually 32 inch TVs is what I use. You could kind of see the 31.5 didn't go behind the bezel, which is not a big deal. It's not that bad. The only thing is that maybe somebody might complain about the LEDs. Um, so he might have to play with the LEDs off. That's another thing also, he bought LEDs. He actually bought 32 feet of LEDs. Um, usually all you need is 16 feet, but it came with 32. So that's two reels. Um, this thing is bright in the dark. <laughs> Speaking of dark, I'm gonna turn it off. Again, it is bright. I normally don't, I usually put the LEDs underneath the control panel here. But he had so much excess LEDs, I added the LEDs underneath the actual control panel. So I know I just said that twice. Um, again, deck here, like the bottom here. I always do that, but he had extras, so I went along the edge of the control panel. Pretty cool with this because it illuminates the marble and the DC logo. So pretty cool. The biggest thing also, there's so much back glow now. I mean, again, so much more LEDs going on. If I take a look back here, again, neatness, clean. You could see the LEDs. I got my ultimate gaming console inside of here just for video purposes. Not too bad. Again, LED'd out. You can see here, it's got like the two ports. So one LED strip is going to the left, one LED strip is going up across down it is led'd out so since i have the back open let's talk about the back real quick so this was the box that the speakers came in cyber acoustics um i don't know i don't remember the exact wattage but you could see real quick off the bat these actually have two tweeters so there's four tweeters whatever you want to call them i call them tweeters uh basically where the audio comes out of there's four of them whereas my logitech is one big one um, so as you can see, a little jank, but it does work. I basically left it in its case and attached it. The other big thing is that there was not much slack, like the Logitechs. So again, trying to keep wires nice and neat. This comes down behind the monitor. Let's open up the back door. Don't want that to hit my head. And it does have its own subwoofer. Again, a little bit more of a low profile subwoofer compared to the Logitech but it works, it's audio, going in with the audio in jack on that. Now the real quick thing I do wanna show you guys is the monitor. Oh. Monitors, again, TVs, the inputs are usually underneath. This one, as you can see, I had to actually chop out a piece of the framing. No, it's not weak, this thing is strong, it's not gonna go anywhere, but as you can see with this type of monitor setup, you have to modify now the brace. Yes, I did go big, cause you gotta remember that the monitor goes up and down. So imagine if I just cut out a little piece and then the monitor had to be down a little bit, that means I would have to take out the entire piece. So yes, I did go big on a cut, but honestly, if you look very carefully, there's a lot of inputs on this. You got the display port, you got two HDMIs, you got an audio and you got the power all right here. I normally don't like doing this, but again, he supplied the monitor, how to, you know, you get used to the change and work with it. So again, all in all, pretty solid. Nice, nice setup. Again, the monitor and the big thing was to show off is the speakers. Now, as far as on JP's end, he messaged me and he did notice something about the speaker grills. Um, basically, again, if you think about it, the, it's a white melamine. So it's a white sheet that's on the actual MDF. And then they cut it with the CNC 
And he basically noticed that like the inside of this, it's not white. It's uh, it's brown. So I, I guess he thought that it was painted. Um, no, this is just melamine. As you could see though, with the new speaker, you could see this kind of block. There's no LEDs going through it. That's because you saw the speaker housing. Can I see? Oh, you might be able to. As you can see there, there's the two tweeters. So there's two and there's four. So me opening up the case, mounting four, it's, it would have been such a headache. Not to mention I've never used these speakers before, so I don't want to open it and then find another disaster. But if I do turn off the light again, and you probably didn't notice in the beginning, but now you can see this. It's not that big of a deal. It's really not that big of a deal, but luckily again, centered, aligned. Imagine if this was like up here and this was down here, then you would notice it. But in all honesty, not too bad. JP did request for me to try to paint this. Um, I did a test piece of MDF, no go. It is not white. When you do like MDF, it doesn't absorb correctly. I didn't want to mess this up. It's not worth that. It's not worth the risk of messing up anything. Real quick, again, three inch trackball, really cool. And again, I do have the trackball linked up to the wiring to the LEDs. Only thing I don't know yet, I guess you can't make it one color on the trackball. It basically just has a black and yellow for the power of the LED, but I don't think you can make it one color. Now we get into the fun side. Vic, why didn't you wire for this guy? What's wrong with you? This right here, he is using this. I've never used this before. Apparently it is an IPAC Ultimate IO. So what's good about this is that like it does players one and two, but this also does RGB buttons. Um, again, on Reddit, he's on Reddit. He was getting some basic recommendations and people recommended this. I've never physically had this in my hand. I've never touched this. I don't, I never, I never, I never did this. So when I spoke to JP, I said, listen, I'm going to need more time to understand the wiring, which it's not that bad, but it's not as easy as a Zinmo. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I do know, and I did tell him that basically you got to think of it. His LEDs is one single color. It's not RGB. You'll need to do different LEDs and you might have to do different buttons all together, but he's okay with that. His main thing was just getting this to work. So again, that's why there is no wiring. He is going to be wiring it with this. Now, Vic, why didn't you mount it for him? This is kind of crazy and I didn't message him. Um, it's a pretty big board, as you could see. I mean, normally with a, a board this size, I would leave it here. Um, I'm not a fan of people, they just let it float. Like, you know, kind of float and the wire's holding it up. That's ridiculous. You should mount your boards. I would have mounted it here or here. It does fit perfectly here. It does clear everything. Again, I'm keeping it in the packaging because I don't want to mess anything up. But the biggest shocker, and I messaged him, was this. This right here basically is the wiring. And the length of this wire is ridiculous. Um, I believe he said he spent 100 bucks on this encoder. You would think they would give you a long enough wire. It might look long on the camera, but if I had it here, you can't even get player one like buttons. You really can't. I'm not even trying to exaggerate it. But like, you can't. Look, even if the trackball wasn't in the way, you are not gonna wire that. So unfortunately, I told him you're gonna have to jumper wire. Um, that's why honestly, when we were first talking about pricing, um, I said to him like, you know, I might have to modify the wiring and all that, but he's gonna be taking care of that on his end. So again, as far as another piece of the puzzle, the encoder he is using is the IPAC Ultimate on this. Again, just for video purposes, I literally grabbed my ultimate console. I'm doing a lot of hyperspin work now that the baby's here. I have a lot of stuff planned. It's a lot of upgrades going on, but I basically just threw it in there. What's cool about this kind of picture right now, I can send to customers that you could put an actual full-size desktop in the 32 inch. Yes, in reality, I would decase it. I wouldn't have it in the actual case, but it's pretty cool that you could drop in a PC. He right now, JP, is still working on his PC side. Um, so let him do his thing. That's awesome. He has his own computer. He has his own hyperspin drive. That is perfectly fine. Again, the deal was I was going to make the cabinet. Again, this does have a coin door on it, so it's pretty cool. And now, basically, this is going to be the next step is the tutorials on his side uh, just to get some basics down. First thing, JP, I do want to talk to you about the LED buttons. So... 
Anytime I wire up my control panels, LED wiring is the last step because there's so many like wires. You can see back in my videos, like there's wire to wire to wire. It's so much daisy training that I feel like it was going to be in the way while you were going to be focusing on wiring up the iPack. So as you can see, this is totally clean for you to do your wiring for the iPack. You will then basically do your LEDs last. That's how I do my control panels. That is exactly why I did not put the power to the LEDs. All right, JP, but so again, this part right here is just gonna go over how to set up the LEDs. So I always have it bagged. You wanna make sure your contactors don't touch each other, the positive and the negative. It's okay if they tap, your LEDs will go off for a quick second, but I do wanna just show you what to do when it comes time for the LEDs. So as you can see, they are rubber banded. You could just remove the rubber band and you basically start with like the first chain. Um, I usually work left to right. So you could basically start here, you go up and down, up and down, up and down, jump down to here and then across here. Um, so what I'm basically gonna do is you, every button needs a black and a yellow. So here's the easiest thing. It might get not messy, but it might not be, if you're OCD, it might not be exact. Uh, basically on the buttons are these two ends here. As you can see, I just touched the LEDs and the LEDs kind of flicker, but that's okay. On the buttons, there's an actual, like, it's the side ones here, not the micro switch, it's the side ones. Basically, I put one and one. I put, you know, black on one side, the yellow on the other, and then I look over. If I don't see the LED turned on, then you just simply switch the polarity. As you can see, I was just touching the LEDs. And basically now, if I look over, there is an LED on. So again, I know it's kind of weird in the video, but I'm gonna do just one more time. So as you go along, this is how I always do it. I'm gonna see, maybe you could see it from here. Maybe you could see the glow. I'm gonna connect these two. I'm gonna look over. There is no LED, so I'm gonna switch the polarity. So I'm gonna go yellow here and black here. And now I have polarity there. Again, I'll bring you up to here real quick. So as you can see, LED is on. So now the one thing to quick note about the LEDs, since you have blue LED buttons, I wired up LED power to blue. Anytime the LED strip goes blue, your LEDs will turn on. I know it's a little confusing. So the best thing is that when you are wiring it, use either the white, make sure it's white, or put it to blue. Um, real quick, I'm gonna show you. So I have it on blue. You can see there that the white light is on. Basically what I'm talking about is anytime the LED strip goes to, let's say red, your LED is not on. That's because it's, it's waiting for the blue channel. Again, technical court talk, but leave it on white and then do, like I said, you could basically wire it up. I'm gonna do one more just to show you. Uh, give me one second. So now real quick again, I have one in and I'm gonna basically connect my yellow to this one to touch it. You can kind of see the LED just turned on. So as you can see, I'm going like in and out on it. That's how you test it. So if you have both of them in and there's no LED that turns on, you just have to flip the polarity. If you don't want to do that in your OCD, you will literally have to take the button out, flip the LED inside. This, I mean, again, people like it yellow, 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 black, 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 black. So if you are like that, you're gonna have to actually pull out the micro switch and then flip the LED. So now, as always, again, JP ordered this inside of this box, buddy. You have everything. You have your PCB feet that you ordered. You have the Zinmo, and you also have, again, the arcade um, wires and such. The negatives also are here, so you could definitely use that. Again, you purchased that. That is yours. I always give my customers whatever they order. I give it right back to you. So that is yours. I'm going to message you if you want the Ulta gear, um, the LG monitor box, which most likely I do suggest you have just in case anything happens with the monitor. Um, but as far as that, the only reason I'm going to that is the negatives. You basically could daisy chain negatives. Be sure though, player one grounds are separate from player two. I always do player one start and coin the buttons and the four admin buttons should always be grounded to player one. Player two should only be this, okay?
Taking a look real quick, coin door wiring. Um, the coin doors at Game Room Solution Supplies, it's not the X Arcade ones. X Arcades come with wires pre-made. Uh, basically, I took my regular speaker wire. Player one right here is blue and yellow. Player two is red and black. So any Bs, black and blue, those are grounds to the switches. And then yellow is your input, red is your input. So yellow wire, which is up here, as you can see. Yellow wire is player one coin, and the red is player two coin. So when you get to wiring with that, these are grounds, the black and blue, so B and Bs. Coin player one, coin player two. So I'm going to leave that right there because I'm not sure what you want to do with that. Quick note about the trackball. Again, three-inch trackball, awesome stuff. Always keeping the wiring clean. So we got our zip tie here. Basically got the USB going downwards. This wire right here, I didn't want to cut it. Um, I didn't want to put it here either because I felt like it was going to be too much wiring. So I'll let you decide on what you want to do with that. I don't suggest you cut it only because who knows what happens if you cut it. I wouldn't cut it personally. But trackball is pretty easy. USB trackball. What's really cool about the audio setup that he's got, it's got the puck here. So again, on the bottom right, usually I do hot glue these, but I didn't on this one. It's kind of heavy, um, but pretty cool. You got your dial here and it's loud. It is loud. You got your little bass knob here. We got headphone jacks. Awesome, awesome stuff. I always keep wrapping on for customers so he'll be able to pull the wrapping off. Same thing with the chrome T-molding. He will pull off that only because I'm going to put it in the truck rather than not scratch up the T-molding and I let the customer pull off the plastic. Now what's really awesome about this is the eight button player one, player two layout. This is awesome. This is perfect for Street Fighter. This is perfect for Mortal Kombat. PC games, the A button layout is amazing. So him playing Street Fighter V, he's gonna really enjoy this 100%. So again, I don't have the buttons wired up, so I'm basically just using my Xbox controller. Again, this is my personal hyperspin setup. This is the ultimate gaming console, 40 terabytes for the test on this PS3 Nintendo Switch and such but the biggest thing is that i'm going to load up some street fighter 5 and we're going to play all right so i got street fighter 5 champion edition um so big thing i had my ultimate gaming console set to 4k this displays 1440p uh, on it so you could probably do 1080p i keep getting the message about you know 10 uh, 1440 even the monitor recognizes the offset on the resolution i'm right now running this on 1440 um, we'll do a quick training. Again, I'm using my Xbox controller just to kind of show JP real quick how amazing this monitor is. I do give him big shout out to this because this monitor is beautiful. We'll run like Zangief. I have like a bunch of the costumes. So uh, pretty cool, like mech and all that. Uh, oh, this is some rental. Just like the details on it it is definitely definitely noticeable again monitor lg 31.5 inch you could just see like look at the the definition on that again i am running a 2060 super on my card so i'm just gonna button mash the hell out of this i'm gonna try to get it one-handed if i can <laughs> I'm gonna have to put the camera down just to show it off a little bit. I know it's not great of an angle, but again, his big deal was like motion blur to make sure there's no motion blur on it. To the eye, I don't see anything. Again, that is because of the 165 Hertz it does. Again, this monitor is definitely awesome. Again, that is a gaming monitor. That's what they do right there. Colors are great. You could also modify the colors, if anything. I usually do that uh, within NVIDIA Control Center. This way, you know, you get more of the contrast and all that. But so far, JP, this is looking cool. Figure this is cool. Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. Spawn? Fatality? Beautiful monitor. I mean, you got Spawn. We got Spawn on the artwork. That is awesome. Again, just hanging out. Gonna be doing some promo videos on this. Little sneak at my drive. 
always adding games monster jam fighting games racing games that's why i'm doing a very big kind of overhaul on my personal hyperspin dividing my pc games into three wheels pc arcade game friendly so meaning it will work with the arcade buttons then you got all pc games that are like triple a titles that won't work arcades and um racing and driving just to make my list easier right now i'm at like 230 pc games so one wheel 230 games it's kind of overwhelming just trying to make it easy there you guys have it vigvp game case arcades 32 inch anti-heroes coming at you jp get ready buddy